to Light on the Corner Church. Happy Sunday. We're on YouTube. Um, this is Pastor John Karn and I'm his daughter Kiana and we have a wonderful service for you planned. Wonderful service indeed. Welcome to the YouTube home of Light on the Corner Church here in beautiful downtown Montrose. God's country as we like to call it. I'm very excited today Kiana. Uh, ask me why. Why? Because this week uh, we got to watch the Democratic National Convention. Mm -hmm. I learned so much. It was virtual. Yeah, it was like a Zoom thing, but ask me what I learned. What did you learn? I learned, this is very exciting, I learned that I am a raving, evil racist. They told you that? Yeah. Uh, now, I, I already knew I was bad. Personally? But I didn't know I was that bad. I, there's no hope for me. As in America, I am part of the systemic problem, and uh, the only way out is uh, groveling, I think. So uh, here I am groveling. That's a shame. It's a shame, I'm isn't it? Well, that. that's the message I got from all the speakers, and especially from Kamala. Kamala. It's Kamala. What I say? You said Kamala. What is it? It's Kamala. 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 Isn't that a song by Boy George? Kamala. 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 I don't know. Anyway, I'm excited about that to learn about myself from the political convention. And we're going to be trying to do, I'm going to try to do better as a person and not be apparently as evil as I have apparently been. That's good, Dad. 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm making progress. The other thing I'm excited about is something you don't know. I have a little surprise for you. Uh -oh. uh, we have a guest that you don't know about, and this person will be coming out shortly. Okay. But I imagine we have other things to talk about. Um, we have prayer meetings on Tuesday mornings at 10, socially distanced in Fellowship Hall. Um, we will let you know when in-person services resume. But other than that, it's pretty chill. Pretty chill, yeah. You know what? I'm glad it's not 110. Actually, it's not chill. It's really hot. But it's hot, but it's not 110. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. Oh, we're okay. You well, know, a special guest? A special guest is coming. Can we do a drawing? Yeah. We have a giveaway today. Um, if you were here in person uh, a couple months ago and you filled out a blue card, then you are eligible to win. So we are... Stack is getting thinner, so you are eligible to win. What's the prize? We have a wonderful little Ooh. book by Frederica Matthews Green, and she talks about the ancient spiritual disciplines and uh, making your life make sense, spiritually speaking. She's rather famous, uh, Arthur. This it's is her, a girl. her little book. Yeah, she is. It's uh, called The Illumined Heart. And we're giving it away today. Hey, okay. Let's look. Am I picking? You're picking. Okay. All right. I don't know who this don't is. Look. I'm not looking. Okay. By the way, what do you think of the background music? It's great. It's kind of groovy. We have not just a guitar player, but the drummer also. Right. Here. And the winner of this book is none other than Walt Tozier. Walter Tozier. Yay. Hooray. Walter. Hooray, Walter. Defender of the universe. You know, this is so fun. Let's do another one. Okay. How do I put Frederica? I'll put Frederica over here. This is what we're giving away now. We have a glossy booklet about the basics of the Christian faith. Yeah. It's really good. I'll let you draw this time. Yay. The winner is... Martha Hankins. Martha! Yay. Yay, Martha. That's great. Listen, if you ever go sick, get sick, go to Martha's house. Because so, that's where you get well. Jay is getting better every day. Yeah. Thanks to Martha. So we will send those to you um, in the mail. Thought I was coming down to the cold the other day. Thought about moving in with Martha for a few days, but then I got well. So that's, that's good. By the way, I tested negative for the virus, Wuhan that's virus. Good. I, I didn't have any symptoms. Of the, the, doctor, the doctor got sick of me nagging. <laughs> So, let's take the test already. Slide. All right, all right. All right. All right. Which, my doctor is sick of me, truth be told. All right, now what happens? You know what? People are asking me about this. Do you mind telling them about the ticket, the mask ticket? Yeah. Thing? Well, it's not a ticket. I didn't have to pay nothing. But I was in Montrose and I was holding my mask and I didn't have it on outside. And Glendale PD pulled over and handed this to me and my friend and it was very sweet and she was very pretty no SWAT team it was fine nobody frisked yeah, she you she just said we're just handing these out you know she put on a mask they didn't throw you against the car no no that's and good was, you know and now it wasn't LA County Sheriff it was Glendale it was Glendale Police Department yeah you know I think the sheriff has better things to do so he's not doing it yeah and it says to Danielle Funk, but that's me. <laughs> what is so, it for a first, second, third offense? A lot of money. How much? Like a lot, like a thousand. For, did you have no mask? Yeah, I had it, it didn't, it wasn't on. You got a fake ticket for not wearing it properly. Yeah. That's but that's enough. I'm bored with that. It's old news. We have a special guest. Do you have a record now? I hope not. Okay, um, I'm going to go look for this guest, I suppose. Did you do any time? No. Okay. Yeah, I'll be right let's back. get the guest. I'll okay. get the guest. You, you go do something. Okay, I'm going to go. Then. We have uh, a special guest today. And uh, with us is Dr. Gretchen Schlesinger. 
Uh, we talked about this. We did talk, and yes. I've been work. I've been working on it all yes. these months, and. I should tell you, you've given me permission to call you by your nickname, yes. if you recall. My nickname is Retainer Girl. Retainer, Retainer Girl. Girl is back in your house. All right, well, we're delighted. We're the church. Let me just tell you how happy we are. Yeah. We, we have, you're the episode that you, you know, showed up in, that yeah. you appeared in, is four times more watched than any other L-O-C-C episode that we have. It's the one with you. Yeah, you're and welcome. The, so the public loves you. <laughs> I know the band has been asking for you. Yeah, they're and great. Everybody wants Retainer Girl. And, and I've been putting it's them true. off and putting them up. But we finally got you. Yes. I'm so excited. Now, I'm here. I thought, if I can just confess this to mm. Retainer Girl, yes, that Pastor. last time you were here, <laughs> you said that in... When you're online, like doing a Zoom call, yeah. you should wear your mask mm -hmm. so that the what? So that the germs, the COVID germs, do not pass through the phone, through the internet, through you, and vice versa. All right, I have to admit because that happens. I thought that was a bit much. They run studies. And I thought that you were wrong, and how foolish I was, because I was right. last week, uh, one of the major health agencies of the state of Wisconsin huh. said exactly what you said. Yeah. When you're on a Zoom call, you keep that distance, and you wear your mask, because science. Science. Science, yes. I have some additional rules for the mask. Oh, good. You've done very well these past couple months yeah. wearing your mask. Yes. But we have three, three more rules okay. for you. Okay, first, the virus is going away, right? But masks are here to stay. Oh, gosh. Great. Okay, All it's right. a new part of it. It's a new normal. Oh, so, God. masks, we're going to wear them. We're going to wear them. Forever. I'm so sick of that phrase, new normal. I don't care if you get a vaccine. You need a mask. Oh, okay? man. Is that true? We got to always wear a mask now? Yeah. Ah, uh, it's, it's, yeah, you, Fauci is going to Fauci say that. Fauci is going to say that? Rule number two. Uh, it's summer. Yes. It's hot. Yes. So you want to go swimming? Yes. No. No? You need a mask. You need a mask? Underwater. Where have you heard that COVID cannot be transmitted through the water? You need to wear it while you're swimming. Under, under the water, above the water, summer, swimming, mess. Yeah, oh, okay. no. This is getting bad. Does you're that, in, wait, uh, Retainer Girls, does that include the shower? Yes, uh. especially the shower. There's so many germs in the shower. Okay, you need to wear a mask while you're alone. You don't want to give yourself COVID. What are you going to do? Okay, yeah, just like that happens. You, you breathe, you drop it, you drop it, stay away. You, you, it's, it's bad. What if I'm alone out in the woods? Okay, the woods is okay. Well, that's not what uh, Vice President Biden I'm said. I'm kidding. Oh, so okay. You need it in the woods, <laughs> too. Okay. Uh oh, doggone it. What How many rules have ocean? I done? Oh, oh, you did do uh, Okay, rule number three. Yeah. You need a mask number while three. eating. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to do it. You, you, you got to find a way to keep that mask on while you shovel food into your mouth. You can't just take it off. <laughs> What's wrong with you? That's really true because if you have to wear a mask, you know, like sitting outside at a patio at a restaurant. Yeah. And the, but then you got to take it off to eat. You're ruining everything. You're ruining everything. You bad person. I hadn't thought it. Maybe we should just be fed intravenously. Yeah. Yeah. So my recommendation as a doctor is everybody just get a mask tattoo. Therefore, you're covered. Morning, noon, and night, it's there. You can just get the tattoo. It's right there, and it'll be blue all over your face, over your mouth, and your retainer. And you'll be covered for life. 
show. That's great. You know, Dr. Fauci, that's, that's what, all I, yeah. if I can ask a follow-up mm -hmm. question, Dr. Fauci last time was talking about uh, goggles. Your goggles. And it's good to wear goggles yes. because your eyes can get... You can never be too careful. So what if... Goggles and earmuffs cover all your orifices in your face. All your... Orifices. Orifices. <laughs> Your whole oh, yes, I serious, see. This is serious, Pastor. All right. Wait, all the, Sorry. Just, just any, cover your whole Any head. hole in your head. All of, yeah. All right. Basically. What do you think about this? If I wear it up to my forehead, I'm covering. That's good. You need to wear that while driving, and then, and just will, like that. That's what I thought. That's what's safe I for everyone. Let me demonstrate. Okay. That's good? That's good. Okay. That's good. Very good. Very good, Pastor. I've been, well, I've been a Johnny come lately on this, nah. and I'm so glad you're here to help us. Thank with, you for having me. With the rules. It's a highlight just to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gershon. Schessinger. Schessinger. I'm glad I'm able to help your people here. Um, great help. We got a great setup going on. We do. We a great show. Good. It's a, it's Needs a, more rules. <laughs> well, we are helping us. Yeah. We're helping us with the rules, and uh -huh. and uh, we appreciate that. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful church. They're not here right now because of the rules. The rules. You know, we're dealing with our governor and the LA County supervisors, mm. and, who are trying their best to. Ruin your fun. <laughs> yeah, ruin our fun. Yes. Anyway, thank you so much. You are, listen, you are welcome back anytime, Doctor. Sure. And, and uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. I will welcome back your delinquent daughter now. She's wonderful, she isn't she? She got a ticket. She didn't follow the well, rules. Well, she didn't follow the rules. That's right. She got a That's ticket. Right. Well, at least it's a pink one. Yeah, she, at nice. least it's a pink one. All right, well, God bless. All right. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you so much. Remember your rules. Thank you. I shall love you. And there you have it. That's Retainer Girl. We're going to take a little break and get my normal partner back. We'll be right with you. Wow. I can't believe I, I missed her again. She was great. Was she okay? Fabulous. She's a bit of a handful. God no, I no. Yeah. She's easy to work with. She's. Do you understand her? Yes. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> All right. We have a song for you. Uh, a wonderful one of our favorites. Um, so sing loud and stay tuned. Okay.
I've got good news today. The kingdom of God is coming. And really it's here already in a covert way, but the news is very soon the kingdom of God will be here in an overt way. But first, this has to happen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, Revelation said, and every eye will see him even those who pierced him. And all the peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. As surprising as it may seem, for most of the world, the second coming of Christ is really bad news. But not for everybody. Listen to how Jesus describes his own return. He says, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror 
apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Let's bow in prayer, shall we? Holy Father in heaven, your word says that one day your Holy Son Jesus will return to earth to judge and to reign over his creation. I fear we don't believe this. It sounds too good to be true. Convince us today, Lord, I ask, and help us to preach that these dear ones might hear your voice. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Two weeks ago, we went point by point through a terrible list of judgments called seals, trumpets, and bulls. Jesus called these terrible seven years tribulation like the world has never seen. But the terrible tribulation has a wonderful silver lining that most people don't talk about. It is, those seven years are, an immensely evangelistic time. Defying the beast, or the Antichrist, many will come to faith in Jesus during those seven years. And many of those new believers will survive till the end. For these brave tribulation saints, the sight of the return of Christ is the best thing they could ever see. It's really the world's greatest news for them. For the promise of Jesus will have finally come true. When these things begin to take place, said Jesus, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. So here's the situation. Jesus returns to earth. The beast and the false prophet who terrorized the earth for seven years are thrown into a fiery lake. The awful tribulation plagues are finally done. And the earth is pretty beaten up. But now, Jesus himself is standing on earth with mortals and immortals, with mortal people who looked up and saw him coming, and with immortal people who came with him to earth. That's us. Then what happens? Well, Jesus immediately begins setting up his kingdom by fulfilling a promise. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. The kingdom of God is beginning. So says Jesus. Take your place. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Now these are mortal citizens of the kingdom, the believing survivors of the tribulation. These are the sheep on his right hand. These sheep, along with us, the church, and in new resurrection bodies is what we'll have, which is a wonderful thought, and Old Testament saints will be resurrected and then 
subjects of the kingdom of God on earth. So we will have mortals who believe in Jesus and immortals who believe in Jesus living together on earth in the kingdom of God. Now I should say, that's who I'm talking about when the king talks about the sheep on his right hand. It's a sad day for the goats, let's face it. They have finally run out of time. They spent the last seven years shaking their fists at God and refusing to repent. They survived, but now they finally run out of time. For the judge of the world has come. And for them, it's over. They are destroyed. Everybody in the kingdom believes in Jesus. The kingdom of God beling, believes, begins with people who belong in the kingdom of God. It's very simple. Remember all those times when we pray, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, on that day, that prayer is finally answered. And God tells us what his kingdom will be like. From Isaiah 65, Behold, I will create new heavens, not a new heaven, but new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. Sounds like to me Israel has a future. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his years. Now listen to this. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. And the one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. Inside all of us, I think, is a yearning for all mankind to be one and join hands and there to be one religion and one earth and peace on earth when all of humanity can join together in celebration. And that day is coming. And it's called the kingdom of God. Well, it sounds to me like the kingdom of God is different than this kingdom of man. There are some changes. What are they? Well, for one thing, there's a new set of constellations. There's a renovated earth, a redeemed and recreated Israel and Jerusalem and new and improved lifespan. 
and a new prayer promise, a new set of rules for nature and animals. These kinds of descriptions are sprinkled throughout the Old Testament. It was hard for me to just pick one or two, you know, passages about the kingdom of God, but they are throughout the Old Testament. I wanted to read more, but all right, here's one more from Zechariah. This is what the Lord says. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city. Well, it isn't now. But I can tell you, having spent three months there, Jerusalem is a secular place. There's religion all around, but it's a secular country and a secular city. And the mountain of the Lord Almighty will be called the Holy Mountain. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will save my people from the countries of the east and the west. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem. And they will be my people. And I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. This is what the Lord God Almighty says. Many peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will yet come. And the inhabitants of one city will go to another and say, let us go at once to entreat the Lord and seek the Lord Almighty. I myself am going. And many peoples and powerful nations will come to Jerusalem to seek the Lord Almighty and to entreat him. It's very different from today. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In those days, 10 people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, let us go with you because we have heard that God is with you. Well, it sounds like God has given a new heart to Israel. Israel, dear ones, will believe in Jesus. And not only that, but Jesus will live in Jerusalem. You remember that Isaiah promised earlier, the government will be on his shoulder. We sing that at Christmas time. It's in Handel's Messiah. For unto us a child is born. And it goes on to say, and the government will be on his shoulder. We're going to have an earthly government, but that government will be on the shoulders of Jesus. He will be in charge. I take it, dear ones, the kingdom of God means the end of Congress. So far, I like the kingdom of God very much. Well, don't you wish the Bible told us how long God's kingdom on earth will last? Well, I've got more good news. It does tell us. The Old Testament and the New Testament speak with one unified voice about the kingdom. The Holy Apostle wrote the following. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss. I take it that's the poetic name for hell and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon. Let's see if you can figure out who this is. He seized the dragon. Who's that? The ancient serpent. Who's that? Who is the devil? Who? Or Satan? So, John wants you to make sure that you understand who this is. The devil is seized by an angel with a great chain. And he threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. And I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast 
or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years was ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Oh my goodness. John, John gives us some fascinating details about the kingdom. Number one, the kingdom lasts for a thousand years. In five verses in this chapter, John mentions the duration of the kingdom six times in five verses. A thousand years. I say this because many Bible scholars want to say, even though John has gone overboard in repeating himself, well, you know, time is time. It's not really, I know it says a thousand years, but it doesn't really, it's not necessarily what it says. It does, you know, it's, it's a long time. A lot of, lot of books and seminary professors say this. I got, I got to feel sorry for poor John, who's gone out of his way six times to say how long the kingdom of God on earth lasts. A thousand years. That's number one. Two, no wonder the kingdom of God is a time of peace and righteousness. Satan is bound and nowhere to be found for a thousand years. That sounds mighty good to me. He's chained and locked in the abyss. Third, brave and martyred Christians, our brothers and sisters in Christ, brave and martyred Christians who during those seven years refused to take the mark of the beast on their forehead or their hands, they are resurrected in the kingdom of God. More power to them. Fourth and finally, the kingdom of God is not the end. Apparently, there are things still to come after the reign of Christ on earth. You know, I'm coming to the end now, but I want to let you know that across the street from the United Nations, there's a wall called, they call it the Isaiah Wall. And here's what it says. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Well, that's ripped out of its context. It's still a nice thing, and it talks of peace, which we all want. But you should know the preceding verses that they've left out. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Neither nation will not take up sword against nation, 
nor will they train for war anymore. That's the context of the Isaiah wall. Dear ones, this is not a man-made utopia, but a God-ruled kingdom. And it's coming, dear ones. All, think of this, would you? All of the dreadful things that grieve your heart, that you hear in the news and see on TV, the mayhem, the violence, the hatred, the injustice, all of these things that grieve your heart about life on earth today will be transformed by the Lord Jesus in his kingdom tomorrow. Isn't that good news? The kingdom of God is coming. I urge you to be a part of it by making peace with God through his son Jesus, who died for your sins and rose again and calls you to new life in Christ. Let's bow in prayer. Holy Father, thank you for a bright future. I, help, I pray that you'd help us to believe what you've told us in your word, that the kingdom of God is coming. It now exists as kind of an enemy of this world, the kingdom of God, in a covert way, but then in an extremely overt way, as you rule and reign over your planet Earth. Since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Hi everybody, thank you for watching all the way through. It's a, it's a longer service for you today, but it's full of full of good things that we plan just special for you all. Um, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, share this video with your friends and check the links in the description below um, for um, our donations page, our website, all that good stuff. Um, we have a quiz for today, so comment below the right answer. It is, what national monument building, important place, is across the street from the Isaiah wall mentioned in the sermon? Okay? Remember? So type that below, and if you get it right, um, we'll send you a prize, or something, something good. It'll be good. And, um... I think that's it. Thank you for watching again, and we hope to see you soon, and um, Lord bless.